Well, it is a dark day for the state of Maine. At least 18 people were killed, 13 people injured, according to Governor Janet Mills in an afternoon press conference today. Two mass shootings in Lewiston, Maine, and hundreds of officers. They are still actively searching for a 40-year-old suspect after he unleashed a barrage of bullets inside a restaurant in a bowling alley yesterday around 7 p.m. He is still considered armed and dangerous. Now, this is Lewiston, Maine, the state's second largest city, and it is around 36 miles north of Portland. The shooter has been described as a certified firearms instructor and a member of the U.S. Army Reserves, and there are also reports of a recent mental health history. Maine residents are still being urged to shelter in place as this manhunt is ongoing. And the governor also expressed concern that those affected, they will need emotional support, grief counseling. And if they need to talk to someone, she recommended that they text 988 for free and confidential counseling. And our prayers here is that there will be a very large response from the pastors of the local churches to make themselves available for the victims and their families. Now, she stated in her remarks that uh, Maine has always been the safest state in the nation, 1.3 million residents there. So, friends, I just want to stop and let's just briefly lift up uh, these people to the Lord in prayer before we go on with the next news story. Dear Heavenly Father, there are a lot of people in shock and disbelief over this mass shooting last night. And there are a lot of unanswered questions. And we honor you, Lord, as our, our God and our King. And we ask you to bring healing to our land, to help people to see their moment-to-moment -moment need for you, for themselves, and also for their families. And that only true healing can only take place when a heart humbles itself before your mighty throne of grace. And we even pray for the suspect, Lord, this man who is at large. May he be safely brought into custody. May justice be served. And may he be able to do no further harm. Please, Father God, bring this community together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, friends. Well, in this next story by Axios News, this is uh, True Headlines, Biden's post-war plan for Gaza. President Biden is signaling for the first time what his plan would be for the day after the war in Gaza. A whole new generation of peace talks in the Middle East on a two-state solution in which Israel would coexist with a Palestinian state. Now, interesting note here, just a secondary thing, the first name of the man writing this article, his name is Barack Ravid, and, you know, I just, I, I believe that there is a man behind this story, and his name also is Barack. Biden's call for a concentrated effort to begin talking about a two-state solution uh, represents a pivot for the president. So, is this whole Gaza war a set up for a push for a two-state solution? Let's go ahead and read on. Biden has focused largely on trying to avoid conflict between Israelis and Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank and securing a big peace deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia. But after terrorist attack on Israel, there's no going back to the status quo, he says. Israelis and Palestinians equally deserve, deserve to live side by side in safety, dignity, and peace. And again, he says there's no going back to the status quo as it stood on October 6th. So it also means that when this crisis is over, he said that there has to be a vision of what comes next. And in our view, he's speaking for all Americans, and he is not speaking for the Christian majority, but in our view, he said, it has to be 
a two-state solution, and it means a concentrated effort from all the parties, Israelis, Palestinians, regional partners, global leaders, to put us on a path toward peace. Biden, in a phone call with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday, he spoke of a pathway for a permanent pathway to peace for Israelis and Palestinians after this crisis, the White House said. And he emphasized to Netanyahu that Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people or their legitimate aspirations of a state of their own. So if there ever were a prophecy alert, it would be this, President Joe Biden sending military support to Israel, which looks good to help it fight against Hamas terrorists, but then at the end of it, at the end of the day, poking his finger in the middle of God's eye by bringing forth a two-state solution. So in essence, our nation has effectively provoked and poked the bear, Russia, provoked and poked the dragon, China, and now the nail is in the coffin by provoking and poking God's eye, dividing the nation of Israel. It will surely usher in the day of the Lord. And I believe there will be global earthquakes and subsequent natural disasters with the nations who have signed the two-state solution document. And I believe it will come forth even before the ink dries on the document. God's anger will be poured out against all those who have divided his land. And it is as God uh, has worked all the way throughout the word of God, he deals with others measure for measure. So he will come against those who also come against his people. God will bless those who bless the Jewish uh, people, and he will curse those who curse the Jewish people. So I, you know, as believers, we need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem as we are instructed in the book of Psalm chapter uh, 122, and that no more bloodshed will occur against them or the Palestinians. Friends, God cares about the salvation of all people, and we need to take a stand against all injustice in the earth. Don't be a cowardly Christian. Now, one of our friends, he called us two days ago, and he was very shaken by a dream that he had received from the Lord. And in the dream, the United States of America was hit with a catastrophic attack, an unrelenting attack. Now, he didn't know when it would happen, but it, it could be years from now. He did not know. But in this dream, and he knew specifically that 25,000 nuclear warheads hit the United States from Russia, and 25,000 nuclear warheads hit the U.S. from China. The USA was done. It was completed. He said it was toast completely destroyed and it sure sounded like he was describing exactly the passage from revelation chapter 18 verse 2 which is slated on god's calendar let me read it babylon the great is fallen is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird and, you know, it looks like on the surface that the USA, we are the great saviors of the world. But that is clearly not the depiction that God sees. The Bible clearly describes us as a dwelling place of demons. So, friends, we need to use our time wisely and we need to be a prepared people. And we don't know when the, the Lord is coming specifically. We need to always be filled with hope. And that day will come, but even the coming of the Lord, that day will be mocked. Oh, where is the promise of his coming, they will say. And so we need to stand for righteousness in the earth till our last breath. So be it the Jews who are globally being singled out or the poor, the homeless, the unborn child, the Palestinians. 
You know, these are the ultimate targets of the devil. We need to pray without ceasing while we have breath in our lungs. And whatever the Lord has called you to do while we have time, you need to be busy doing that as well. All right, friends. Well, thank you for joining us today. We will talk to you again real soon. God bless.